And you want to do the same sort of thing with your aquascaping, making use of that negative space to create interest, especially if you want to breed the fish. There's some quartz veins running through it as well. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So the last few weeks, I've had a couple of people ask me about aquascaping and if I could do a video about the topic. So I thought this week would be a good week to do that video. Now, I should point out before we get into the video that I am by no means a good aquascaper, but I will try to give you some handy tips and hints on what you could do with your aquascaping and what I look for when I'm personally aquascaping my aquariums. Anyway, let's get on to the video. So the vast majority of my subscribers wouldn't know this, but back in the day, I used to be into photography. Now, these are some of my images here, and you're probably wondering why the hell am I talking about photography when I'm doing a video about aquascaping? And that's purely because some principles in photography can be used in aquascaping, talking mainly about the rule of thirds. In photography, if you've been into photography for a while, you would have heard of the rule of thirds, where when you're taking a photo, you kind of put the subject off center, and that's why I'm showing you my photos. So you can see some of these photos, the subjects are off center. They're a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, making use of that negative space to create interest in an image. The same principle applies in aquascaping. You want to have, most of the time, have your main rock off center from the aquarium to create interest in the aquarium. Have some dead space in the aquarium. You want to have leading lines into the aquarium. Some of these images here have leading lines and you can see that they draw your eye naturally through the image into the back of the image. And you wanna do the same sort of thing with your aquascaping. Draw the person's eye into the aquarium towards the main subject, the main stone of your aquarium. So you wanna make use of that negative space, that dead space, so to speak, that will help you create interest in the aquarium. So we're gonna go looking at the aquariums that I've got in the fish room that I'll show you some of them. I'm gonna show you all of them. We'll talk about the different things that I went for when I aquascape these aquariums because you've got to consider the fish you're keeping as well. You can't just aquascape an aquarium and then plonk any old fish in the aquarium and hope that the fish is going to be okay in that aquarium. Some fish are rock dwellers, some fish are shell dwellers, so you need to put shells in the aquarium. And then some cichlids also require you to block the line of sight so the fish won't fight. All those factors come into account when you're aquascaping. It's not only just about creating interest in the aquarium for you to enjoy your fish, but you want to create a habitat that your fish are going to feel safe and comfortable in especially if you want to breed the fish. You want them to feel safe in the aquarium so they can get into that spawning activity. So let's look at some of the aquariums that I'll show you today and hopefully you'll get a better understanding of what I look for when I'm aquascaping my aquariums. Rightio, so this aquarium, the majority of you guys who've been on my channel for a while now would recognize this tank as my Lamprologus oscillatus gold tank. This is my breeding trio in it. And you can probably see on camera, there's some fry to the right. This tank is obviously for shell dwelling cichlids. So there are some shells in this tank. Now the main thing I needed to do because I've got two females and one male was break the line of sight of both females. So when I aquascaped this aquarium, I knew what fish I was putting in it. That really helps you in deciding what way you're gonna aquascape the aquarium. And if you, if you know what species of fish you're gonna have it, that really does help you aquascape the aquarium. So I knew I'm gonna need at least two piles of shells, possibly three for the male as well. And then because I've got two females, I need to break the line of sight between the two females. So when I first put the fish in here, that rock in the middle here is purposely there to break the line of sight between the two shell piles for the two females to coexist in the one aquarium and not fight all the time. So just behind this rock here, there's a number of shells. You can't really see them because this, this sand bed has been uh, excavated by the females when they've been spawning in these shells here. So one female used to live at the back of the tank there. And we've got a female here just here in this shell here, she's quite stressed because I'm using my hands a lot when I'm, as I'm filming this video. Now you can see there's a rock on the left here, has a lot of nice marbling quartz through it. That is the main stone of the aquarium. So what you can see here, hopefully you can see on camera, there is a bit of algae now grown on this, this rock that I used to block the line of sight between the two shell piles. There's some quartz veins running through it as well. And those quartz veins are kind of horizontal, trying to lead your eye to this main rock here. Even though this main rock is in the dark, it's at the back of the aquarium, your eye is still drawn to it because of the very bright white marble, that quartz that's running through the rock. So that stands out, your eye is drawn towards that rock. Well, I feel it is anyway. So you've got lines in this rock drawing your eye to the main rock in the aquarium. These lines in this rock here, the purpose of that rock to block the line of sight between the two females, 
but then the, the, the quartz, the marbling through it, is drawing your eye to the main rock, which is this rock at the back of the tank. It's great if you can find multiple purposes for your rocks. It, like say, they're not only a decorative look, but they also play a role in protecting the two females from each other. This tank looked quite different when I first set it up and because shell dwellers love to dig, that main rock on over here on the left did fall over because they were digging underneath that rock and thankfully they weren't crushed by it. There is other stones <laughs> under this pile of sand, this pool filter sand that they've covered up and those stones were here to lead your eye to this main rock. And if you followed the line, it went up like this. So as your eye looked through the tank, it got higher and higher and looked at towards the back of the tank, just drew your eye that way. That's what I was going for with this aquarium. Uh, it's, does, it hasn't really kind of worked out again because the, the guys in this tank like to dig and they've buried a lot of the rocks. And unfortunately, the, the rocks look green. These were beautiful gray slate rocks with quartz marbling in them. Algae has kind of ruined that look, unfortunately. So the other big thing I go for when I'm aquascaping is to match the color stone with other rocks. So what I mean by that is sometimes you see aquascaping, they'll have all these different colored stones in the, in the aquarium, so different colored pebbles. Sometimes that can work, but most of the time I don't feel it does. Sometimes you'll see different sorts of rocks in the one aquarium, say sandstone and slate and terracotta pots. I really don't like the look of terracotta pots in aquascaped aquariums, obviously. There's a place for those, uh, but in in these tanks I tried to avoid it because I wanted these tanks to look as natural as possible. So try to use rocks that are all the same sort of rock for your aquariums and your aquascaping will be a lot easier to make it look nicer. If all the rocks match your job will be a little bit easier. And if you go with that rule of thirds principle you will find aquascaping a whole lot easier and it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Okay guys, so this aquarium is my Neil Amprologus Brevis Sunspot Aquarium and you can see that there are a lot of fish in here. So there's a lot of fry with the trio, the adult parents, and these are the trio here, these guys here. You saw the female going to shell, this female here almost went into the shell, and that's the big male, that's the main, uh, that's the father of all these fry. And there are fry in, in other aquariums in the fish room. Now you can see, with these guys, it really didn't need to break the line of sight up. The brevis are a little bit more peaceful than the Ocelatus gold. Actually, they are a lot more peaceful. So what I had in this tank was a female at the front here, you can see her just hovering above her shell. And I had the, fem the other female at the back here in this shell. Now, eventually, over the last few weeks actually, you see this female right here, she came out of the shell. She's moved to the front of the tank and both females are right next to each other within the distance of about three to four inches and they're fine, they're not fighting. Now the other thing that might be a bit misleading with that is that there are other fish in this aquarium. There are other brevis in the aquarium. So like all cichlid tanks, if you have a lot of cichlids in the one aquarium, aggression is suppressed. I feel if I took all these fry out and left the trio in here, maybe the females wouldn't get as, along as well as they are at the moment. So just bear that in mind with your brevis if you're gonna try this. Now onto the aquascaping with this tank. It's pretty minimal. There's a lot of dead space, so to speak, here on the left-hand side of the aquarium. So my Ocelotus Gold and Brevis Sunspot Aquariums are right next to each other, so I didn't want the tanks to look exactly the same. If you notice, in the Lamprologus Ocelotus Gold tank, the dead space was on the right-hand side of the aquarium. This tank has the dead space on the left-hand side of the aquarium with the main rock on the right. So you can see some nice quartz running through this rock here, right through the center, and on an angle, kind of drawing your eye this way this time, rather than this way on the Lamprologus Ocelotus Gold Tank. So I just wanted, so when the viewer came into the fish room, they see these two tanks next to each other. One tank has the rocks pointing one way, the other tank has the rocks pointing the other way. Kind of looks like one tank in, in, in a sense, but it's obviously two. But I do want the two tanks to look very similar, even though I've kind of gone with the same principle in these two aquariums, because these guys are shell dollars. They don't need caves, so to speak, so. Uh, I just had the rocks standing up on their sides like this. So now we'll look at a tank where the cichlids are actual rock dwellers. And this is my white Autolamprologus calvus tank. And the reason why I'm showing you this tank is because the principle in this aquascaping was a little bit different from my shell dwelling cichlid tank. Now these guys are shell dwellers as well. They like to breed in shells. However, uh, they do also like caves. They like a lot of stone, a lot of rock in the aquarium. The main reason why I'm showing you this aquarium though is because of the different sort of aquascaping I went for. With this aquarium, even though I'm using the same sort of stone that I use in my shell dwelling tanks, this grey slate with quartz marbling through it, the aquascaping is quite different because these guys also like caves. So as you can see, there are kind of levels of sand in this aquarium. I've tried to do three levels of sand 
as you go back into the aquarium. And you can see this rock here on its side. There's like a little cliff face and then I've tried to step it up again like that, kind of like retaining walls and then pile the sand up above the rock. So you can see here, there's a rock here as well. It's got sand on it. And then there was rocks up here with sand on them as well that um, the sand has dropped away. And there was rocks up here with sand on them as well that again have dropped away. Now the reason they've dropped away is the male calvus has done a lot of excavating and moved a lot of sand to the front of the aquarium. So that's what's gonna happen with your cichlid tanks. Unfortunately, the guys are gonna do a lot of excavating and uh, kind of mess up your aquascaping, so to speak. So you wanna be very careful the way you pile rocks up on top of each other so your fish don't get crushed. The look I've gone for here is a tiered system, kind of like some stairs and um, going from the front of the tank to the back of the tank. And this tank looked a lot better, a lot different when I first put the fish in here. But as again, that excavation that the male has done has really changed the look of this aquarium. There are two shells here. There's one shell there, one shell there. He's kind of partially buried them. This aquascaping, I don't really like it that much, but there you go. Hopefully that helps you guys out there a little bit. Uh, it's nothing really special, but again, these rocks used to be gray and the algae has grown on them and made them a tinge of green. So they don't look as nice as they used to look, or at least to me anyway. So as you can probably tell, I'm by no means a professional aquascaper, but I just use my photography knowledge and the rule of thirds when I'm trying to design and lay out an aquarium. Anyway, guys, I really hope you found that video informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment, and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you to the next one. Bye.